Thank you for joining us this Friday to talk about Lumen Psychology courses. My name is Joni Felt and I'm the VP of Partnerships at Lumen Learning. Joining me are Lumen's Wendy King, our course product manager for social sciences, Chris Holder, the executive director in the Southeast, and we're especially excited to have Jessica Trailer from Gordon State College joining us to share her experience of teaching with Waymaker Psychology this semester. We'll start off with a brief introduction of Waymaker by Chris. Then Wendy King will talk about some of the features and highlights in Lumen's updated Intro to Psychology course and give a preview of our new Lifespan Development course, which will be available in October. Finally, Jessica Trailer from Gordon State College will share the faculty and student experience that she's had teaching with Waymaker Introduction to Psychology. I'll go ahead and turn it over to you, Chris. Hey there, as Tony mentioned, I am Chris Holder. I'm the Executive Director for the Southeast. Um, I cover pretty much everywhere from Virginia over to Texas and down to Florida. Um, so I wanted to spend a little bit of time with you guys here before Jessica and Wendy take over um, and just give you a brief overview of what Waymaker is and how I've seen it implemented in the classroom. Um, kind of give you uh, some talking points and whatnot when, when talking to faculty. Um, so Waymaker is an adaptive or personalized um, learning plan for students to interact in all of our textbooks. So specifically for psychology um, is what we're talking about today. So each study plan is organized the exact same way. So you'll see here on the screen, there's a series of tiles. So right here in the middle is the dive in section and there's one in green, two in orange, another in green. Um, and then below this is two other tiles that's kind of like a summary and then an end of chapter quiz. Above these two tiles, the, every student will see um, kind of an introduction to the chapter. So it'll list all the, the learning objectives that they're going to learn. And then the most common question instructors get from students is like, why do I need to know this? Where am I ever going to use this again? Um, and so what we do is we list the learning objectives for the students for that particular chapter and then apply it to some type of real world scenario, something that they can relate to. Um, and then the next thing that we ask them to do before jumping into um, the actual meat of the study plan where the content is, is to complete a pre chapter assessment. Um, the assessment's not graded. It is a series of questions depending on the chapter anywhere from nine to to 14, 15 questions, um, but it's meant to, to gauge, to measure the student's um, mastery on that material. Um, so based on how they do in that pre-assessment, these tiles will change colors for the students. Um, so as you can see here, there's two in green. Um, it's hard to see, but they, they say well done. And then, or four in green, sorry, and then two in orange, and these two orange ones say need work. So what we're wanting the students to do is after they take the pre-quiz, if they take it serious, um, these tiles are gonna reflect where their knowledge gaps are. Um, so students are, what we're asking them to do is jump in, and if you only have 15, 20, 30 minutes to study, your time is limited, you probably should spend it in the tiles that are orange, not saying that the ones in green aren't important, but if you only have a, a small amount of time to study, um, that's where that's where you should spend spend your time um, and then once the students work through the the study plan um, they'll eventually get through it and then down to the end of chapter quiz so that that end of chapter quiz is like a sum uh, summative assessment and um, that grade is then recorded and put into the instructor's grade book so um, in summary, it's, it's, it's personalized for every student. It completely integrates into all the major LMSs, so Canvas, Blackboard, uh, D2L, Moodle. Um, the students get instant feedback and, and they're constantly um, being asked so that they, um, they, can, they can demonstrate and demonstrate mastery on, on each learning objective within the chapter. So a little bit about the content. So we, for most of our, our books, if, or most of our courses, if available, we go to OpenStax first. Um, OpenStax is the most popular openly sourced um, quote unquote textbook out there. Um, so we do go and we pull from, from their textbooks first and knowing that no OpenStax book is created equal. Some are great. Some have gaps that are identified by instructors. So 
after we pull the content into our platform, um, we work with faculty across the country to help identify gaps. Um, we work with faculty that may use some of the bigger publisher, um, bigger publisher books that are popular. They just come at a at a cost. Um, so we work with them and help them help. We use them to help us identify where um, we need to supplement things. So what you'll see here is is a video that um, we have supplemented the text with. So. Um, based on where they've identified, we then work either in-house with, with our in-house curators um, to develop things, whether it's a video, an interactive, um, rewording a paragraph to make it more clear for the students, um, or reaching out to faculty that may already have videos that they're using in, in classes and, and don't mind sharing them. Um, so we pull all that into, into the platform so that the students can, can see it all in one place. Um, and that one place being the study plan. And um, like I said, as far as learning design, I said earlier, but the, everything is tied to learning objectives. So when the students are working in the pre-quiz, that's gonna um, kind of point them in the right direction as far as the, the study plan goes. And then when, even when they get down, if they've mastered all the topics in, in the study plan, but then they get to the quiz and they, they struggle with a couple learning objectives and get a couple questions wrong, um, that will be reflected back in the study plan. So the students do have the opportunity to, to go back and study the areas where there were some gaps. Um, and like I said, uh, seamless LMS integration. So it, um, it de we deliver the, the Waymaker cartridge to you um, or to the faculty and they upload it inside of the LMS. And from that point on, it lives inside the LMS. The instructors do everything inside of Canvas or Blackboard so they're not having to learn a new system, which is a huge selling point for faculty, especially a course like Entry Psych, where in most schools there's there's a good many sections, and a lot of times a lot of those sections are taught by adjunct, so it's one less thing that they have to to teach their part-time faculty. Um, also within the content, um, we talked about the videos and whatnot, but there's embedded practice. So there's embedded formative questions that are throughout every one of our texts. Um, this is how we gauged whether or not students are engaging in our material um, and instructors can see this as well. So if students go through and they never, they never look at the, the actual ebook, they don't answer any of the formative questions and they get to the quiz and they don't do so hot. The instructors can see that. They can see that they skipped over all the reading and went straight to, um, straight to the quiz. So what you're seeing here is just a practice question. Um, it has the students go through, fill out an answer, and then they can show the, show the, the actual answer. Yes, they could go straight to it, show the answer, but they're again going back, the faculty can see how long and if or not they're spending, um, if or not they're spending, spending time in, in the content itself. So they do get immediate feedback and, and they're learning by doing, um, which is, is very popular with, with all of the new technology and, um, and tools that are out there. So this right here is an example of um, one of the types of communication that is embedded within Waymaker. So there's two types. There's a, a um, individualized uh, communication that instructors can, can build out. And then there's also automated messages. So this, what we're looking at right now is um, messages that the instructor can build out within Waymaker and then send them out on demand to students that they, um, they see that are struggling um, and offer them specialized help. Hey, come to my office hour or stop by after class, come down and, and see me on and go over a couple of things with you. So these are students that are actually spending time in the formative assessments, um, but still when they get to the, the quiz, they're doing poorly. So it's students that are, are reading, they are trying, but then they're not doing well on the assessment. So these messages are meant to go out to them. And then on the flip side, there's these automated messages. So these also can be set up inside a Waymaker at the very beginning of the semester. Um, you can write a couple of templates and then it will alternate the, the messages that are sent out so the students aren't getting the same message over and over and over again. Um, so these automate, automated messages are meant to be sent to students that one, um, are not engaging in the content. So they're not 
going through and reading the material and engaging in the formative questions. And they're also not doing well in um, on the summative quiz at the end of the chapter. So these are the students that aren't trying and they're not doing well. So as soon as the students go and they, if you turn this on for your course, students skip right through it. They don't read anything. They go to the first attempt of the quiz, they take it and they don't do so hot. As soon as they hit submit and they get say a 60, they will get a message from you, an email from you. So it picks up the email address from that they used in the SIS system to, to register for Canvas or Blackboard. And then it pulls your email address as well as an instructor. So the email is going from you to them and it will say something similar to what's down here at the bottom. It looks like you attempted the surplus quiz, didn't do so hot. Um, and then it will list the learning objectives that they struggled with. So it's individualized for them, personalized for them. Um, so it makes it really easy before they go back in and do the second attempt of the quiz, we're telling them exactly where they're struggling with. So it's just another intercept to touch those students before, before it's too late, before they jump back in and do the second attempt. And then on the flip side, um, you can set up messages so that um, students that do well, they, they get a, a little message of encouragement, a little pat on the back. So this is just one that um, looks like it came from the instructor, but it also was a, or, but it was a, an automated message that was set up in the very beginning of the semester. And then those automatically just roll out. So it seems very simple, um, but I will say, and, and Joni and, and Jessica's gonna touch on this as well, but um, it's one of the things that students and faculty like the most about Waymaker. Um, especially if you're teaching large classes or online classes where it's easy to, to lose that touch with, with students. Um, these messages and emails really make that, bridge that gap for, for faculty. Um, we already talked about this briefly, but this is how um, Waymaker integrates into the different LMSs. Um, this is, I believe, Blackboard over here, Canvas, and D2L down here at the bottom. So it integrates completely. The students never go outside of Waymaker. Um, as far as from the faculty's perspective, we deliver it inside of Canvas or Blackboard or D2L or whatnot. Um, and then they do everything inside of the LMS. So there's nothing extra to learn as far as that goes. Um, and in summary, as far as um, what faculty really like, they, they, do, they do like Waymaker because it is so easy to use. Um, but aside from that, is that it's the ability to customize it. They're not tied to one of the big publisher textbooks where um, chapter one is chapter one. And that's just how it's gonna be. Um, inside of Waymaker, you can modify pretty much whatever you want. Um, you can modify the self-checks, the, the graded quizzes, if you wanna reword some of the, the quiz questions that are within the study plan or replace them or create your own you have the ability to do that and tie them to learning objectives um, that we've identified within the chapter. Um, if we give you a test or a quiz bank, so you can add, remove, modify um, those questions to, to build out your, your own assignments. Um, you can reorder the modules, you can remove things from the modules. Um, and then the most, I would say, appealing part of the integration is that Waymaker is not meant to replace anything that the faculty members are already doing. It's meant to supplement it. So as they're building out their course, they can have a chapter or a folder, say in Canvas, that has the study plan and the quiz. And that within that same folder, they can add their own content as well. So if they have, say, a rubric or a case study they want to add, um, it can all be added and they all live right beside each other. And the students do not know that they're in something of Lumen versus something that, um, that may be the instructor's created content. Uh, so it truly, truly, truly is very cohesive. Um, and then for pricing, um, most of you are Follett on the line. So we do have a partnership with Follett. So um, there is no markup on the product. So the, we sell it to Follett for 25 and then um, that $25 price point is passed on to the students. And, and Lumen and Follett have a rev share program on the backside that um, we work out at the end of every semester. Um, for those of you that aren't Follett bookstores, there, there will be a markup placed on top of the 25 
But if you have any questions about that, get with me or your bookstore and we can figure out what that, what that would be. Um, we can sell activation codes. We can sell directly to students if that's what um, the school wants to do, which in most cases is not the case. Um, and then we can work through all of the, the major inclusive access programs. So first day or in, um, included, um, we, we're set up to work with, with any of those as well. So pretty flexible when it comes to that. Um, now I'm gonna hand it over to Wendy and Wendy is our course product manager for all the social sciences. So she's got some really cool stuff that's coming um, around intro psych and developmental psych. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Wendy. Great, thank you, Tony. Um, yes, I have been working extensively on our social sciences offerings and have spent many a day in our so psychology course. And I'm happy to show off some of the new highlights. Again, we recently did an update and we've got a few updates coming. I just wanted to highlight some of those and show some of the neat features of the course. And so I'm just starting off the content coverage. Uh, as Chris mentioned, it's uh, we kind of build off of OER and try to enhance and um, make it even a little bit more uh, applicable to students and so we do have most of the course does come from OpenStax but we've also added additional content from Nova Psychology um, and lots of other places um, really especially in a few areas where maybe it was a little bit light um, we heard feedback from instructors who really wanted more information about research and statistics and a lot of that stuff wasn't covered in the original text and so we were able to go in um, and, and find those areas and supplement and really offer a robust introductory text. And again, the beauty of OER is that not all of that necessarily has to be covered and some instructors can pick and choose certain modules, but um, it's all in there. Uh, in addition to that, we've added in over 80 video clips. Um, lots are from Crash Course Psychology, which provide a good um, thorough overview of certain topics. We've also done shorter, just example clips of small things to highlight certain concepts and um, let students again review or just something to re reiterate things that were just learned. In addition to that, we've included embedded try it practice questions um, on each page. And this is a new feature. Uh, they currently, about a third of them currently have targeted feedback where if a student clicks on a question and it says, oh, you got it wrong, um, it will tell them actually why they got it wrong. Um, we actually just finalized our um, additional feedback for all of the questions this past week. And so that'll go out um, very soon within the next few days. And that all happens behind the scenes. So that's gonna happen seamlessly um, and no one wrote, it won't ruffle any feathers, but students will be getting targeted feedback on every question now, which is very exciting. Um, so across the board, and again, that is a good way for students to check if they're really understanding concepts as they're working through um, in the very moment as they're working through content. Again, that's not graded. It's just an opportunity for them to see if they're headed in the right direction. Um, in addition to that, we've added in new psych in real life examples, and these are really neat, really robust opportunities for students to, to actually do something with psychology research. Uh, most of the, the content for that was created by Pat Carroll from UT Austin, um, who did a tremendous job in kind of picking apart complicated research examples and applying it in a way that's really fascinating. And so I'll show you a few examples of those in just a moment, but it, um, they give students really a chance to put themselves in the shoes of a psychologist or of a researcher and say like, okay, how would I set up an experiment in this way? And how would I, what would that look like? What would my variables be? And really to even work through the data, um, look at graphs, look at correlation, um, and things that I certainly wish that I had in my undergraduate experience. Um, in addition to that, we've added in four new assignments. Uh, we do have assignments offered for available for every module. And again, these are uh, optional things that can come, they will come imported into the LMS and then instructors can kind of pick and choose um, what works well for them. And of course, they can also choose to ignore those entirely and use their own materials. But uh, we have uh, created some new assignments that correlate with the psych and real life examples. 
so that when students are doing the, the more applied research and learning about it, um, there's also, also an assignment that mirrors that and that can give them more opportunity for practice. So let me, oh, I think I skipped a slide here. Oh, this is, this is an example of a try it question. Um, this is, as I said, when students are reading directly on the text and the practice question. Um, so this is from uh, the, let's see, this looks like the disorders uh, module. Um, and this we're learning about agoraphobia. Um, and so this, uh, you can see the example here is so the student has selected acrophobia, which is actually not quite right. And that's the fear of heights. And so then it's like, oh yeah, that's not it. I knew it started, I knew it was close. I know ar arachnophobia is fear of spiders, so that's not it. Um, and so she was afraid of public places. So now I know, oh yeah, that's agoraphobia. So this is the kind of feedback that students are gonna get now, um, instead of just, that's wrong. Um, so this is actually useful feedback uh, that hopefully students can go and retake this question and then um, even for the correct answer for agoraphobia, we're going to provide feedback that says yes and here's why, because maybe I actually didn't know and I just guessed agoraphobia. Um, so it's good to have that reiteration of oh yeah, this is why and you're on the right track. Um, this is, uh, again, a, a list of all of our psych and real life examples and you can see the new ones. These were added um, at the beginning of the year. So of, as of January 1st, these were all incorporated into the course, all the new ones. Um, and uh, I'll highlight a, a couple of them, but you can see just a quick scan of them. Um, it's learning about the replication crisis. It's learning about blind sight, which is some interesting stuff about um, those who are blind still utilizing part of the visual cortex uh, to experience sight. <laughs> um, and then uh, the illusions one is a really fun one related to the Ebbinghaus illusion where students are shown, well, um, in, the, in the study, researchers were, I guess, participants were shown a, a putting hole for golf and there were images, there were circles around the hole that made either the, the the size of the putting hole appear to be bigger or smaller. Um, and so that's a fun, neat one to see how that, how the perceived size of the golf hole affected people's putting performance. Um, and again, there's some more classic ones like the Bobo doll experiment. Um, this is a neat one as it applies to students. Um, love and pain. Um, this one had, uh, takes, walks students through a study about um, the experience of pain and what helps alleviate that. Does it help to like look at a picture of your boyfriend or your girlfriend or hold their hand or look at a stranger um, and what's most effective? Um, we also have some neat ones related to growth mindset and Carol Dweck's research. Um, and this, I think most students are familiar with that at least by this point, um, but this will walk them through actual the research that was done and show them uh, the kind of uh, the kind of IQ questions that were administered to the uh, the students who took it um, and also let them look at the results. So those are a few examples. I did want to show you uh, what this looks like in the course a little bit. And again, this course pulls seamlessly into the LMS. So this is, I'm kind of showing you the, the our side of things, but this can, it looks like this just inside of the LMS. And so this uh, is a page from the thinking and intelligence module is about problem solving. I just want to show you some of the kind of features you can see throughout the course. Um, this is a little example um, from a TED talk of TED Ed thing here, solving riddles um, and puzzles. Um, and again, this is uh, some try it, some practice questions. You can see this one just says correct, where again, within a week, that's going to say more than just correct. It will give them some uh, some support there as to why. And then I want to show you, this was an example of one of the psych in real life examples. This one is about blurtaciousness. This is found in the module on personality. And this has students think about blurtaciousness, which is like the propensity to, to blurt out really to uh, someone who is blurtatious would be inclined to be vocal, maybe interrupt, um, be outgoing in that way. And so we actually asked students to think about if you wanted to design a study about this, how could you do that? How could you find out if someone is blurtatious? Um, and so we had, we kind of introduced the background of that. What is it like? And this is how you would design questions. And then it says like, choose four statements you think would be best to include in this scale. So I can kind of pick and say, uh, I would design my study that way and say, mm, 
maybe those aren't as good, like let's look for another two. And so this is an opportunity for them to do something. We've added these types of interactives into the course. Um, and again, uh, they can look at the at images and scatter plots um, and see correlations. Um, but I wanted to show this one because we've also, in this, we talk about if we do create a study and then we give it out, is it going to be valid? Is it going to be reliable? And it, it's another way to, to allow students to engage with those concepts. Um, and again, the assignment that mirrors that is this one over here. Um, it has students, again, think more about these terms related to validity uh, that they've covered in the in the example but now there's an assignment where they can apply those things and take it yet a, another step beyond that um similarly the other assignment i just showed for a second this was uh, related to the growth mindsets and so there's this is another a psych in real life example about growth mindsets it has students uh take a look at the actual iq questions that the i think third or fourth graders were given um when carol dweck get, did this study so it's kind of fun um, it's actually, we're trying to find the missing pattern here. Um, and then after I do this incredibly challenging test, I say, um, well, it was hard. Do I want to do more? Did I enjoy this? Um, and these are really, this mirrors what Carol Dweck uh, assigned. Um, and then also a neat thing is students get to manipulate the data, play with graphs, and see what happens when students are praised for effort or praised for ability and things like that. Um, and then again, there is an assignment to, to build off of that, that lets students uh, think about if the results had been this way, what kind of uh, inferences can we draw from that? So um, yeah, that being said, so those are of the, all the main changes. Uh, I just wanted to show that a little bit inside of the course itself. And this is just one last example of other types of things you'd see. Um, this one is related to um, the thinking and cognition one. This is about how our minds can be fooled a little bit. Uh, and these are the types of questions you would see in there. And this is related to that also. Um, students get to actually play with the bar graphs and see what they think is going to happen when they look at the study. So um, it looks like there might be a question that I missed. Is that true? Um, I'm not seeing any questions, Wendy, at this time, but please go ahead and type them in if you have them. Excellent, thanks. Okay, um, so yeah, if you have questions, that's really it for a, a quick overview of the site course. Um, but I did want to take a moment to just talk about the other, the lifespan development course that is coming in October. Um, we're well underway of working on that. And the goal is to make this look pretty similar to what you're seeing in the intro to psych text. Um, so this is, again, there is an initial text that we're working from, and this is one that's found in our course catalog currently. Um, it's not a Waymaker offering, but it is a Candela text as it is now, and it is originated from Laura Overstreet, and she did some phenomenal work, but uh, she worked on it over 10 years ago now, and so lo lots of the information, statistics, and things are outdated, and so we're looking for a more current uh, statistics and examples. Um, and we're actually taking that foundational text and organizing it around learning outcomes. So if I pop back into the site text over here, you can see um, we have the learning outcomes written at the top of the page and we organize it. The learning outcomes are very important to us as we do use that to shape the content on the page, but also all those, uh, the assessments that you see throughout um, are connected to those learning outcomes. And that's really important to us because that enables us to, to run data analyses and find out where students really are struggling. And we have that strong cor correlation between the learning outcome and the assessment items. We can see, oh yeah, you know what, maybe we need to uh, spend some time improving the content here or improving the questions here. Um, and so because of that, that's the kind of the approach that we're taking to the lifespan course as well. We're vetting the learning outcomes um, by module and then by section and then these skill level outcomes found on pages like you see here. Um, so going back here, um, we, and again, we're also vetting that against other popular lifespan development texts. So it's going to have all of your essential coverage, um, and, but it's going to have the similar look and feel to our other, our other introductory text. And so we will have embedded try it questions with feedback. 
Um, there will be more application videos, um, and every module will also come with assignments, discussions, quizzes, and PowerPoints, I think. Um, yes, this is one example. You can see this is under development. This is the course as we've been working on it. This is just one page. Um, this is in the final module on death and dying. Uh, you can see we've got to examine the leading causes of death in the United States and around the world. And we've got the U.S. causes of death. And you see, uh, if I sc scroll down here, um, yeah, there's a video about it, um, some research. Uh, and they, again, these are the questions in their pre-formatted form uh, behind the scenes. So this is, they will also have feedback. Um, you can see this list of footnotes here. These are the kinds of things that we're adding. Um, this is all new uh, to really make the course more, more current and relevant. So exciting things are coming. Um, yeah, I think that's it from me. Um, if you have questions, please put them in the chat and I will go ahead and pass the mic along back to Jody and then to Jessica. Thanks, Wendy. Really appreciate it. Exciting to hear about the things that we've updated and then the up, up and coming. Um, we're also thrilled to have Dr. Jessica Trailer joining us. She's been teaching with our um, Introduction to Psychology course at Gordon State College in Georgia. So I'll go ahead and advance slides for you to start with and then you can, um, or actually, Wendy, do you want to just advance slides while you're on there and then you can turn over the screen to Jessica as she goes ahead and dives a little bit more deeply into the course. Sure. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Wendy, for that. Um, Chris had been my hero for a while, but now I don't, I don't know. I think, I think we're going to pass it to Wendy. <laughs> yeah, so I actually learned something. The psych in real life, that, that's awesome. I've seen the assignments, but I hadn't taken the time to learn about them, and that five minutes right there was just enough for me to assign one. So I, I'm, I'm definitely thankful for that. So I, I am currently the only psychology instructor at Gordon who's using Waymaker, but I'm working to change that. I know that one of my colleagues is going to use it in the fall. And then um, I talked to an adjunct instructor yesterday who is very interested in switching over. So at Gordon, all of our faculty members and adjuncts are allowed to choose their text. Um, so it takes a little bit of, of um, convincing to get them to switch over. But looking at the numbers, we could have saved our students thousands upon thousands of dollars um, just with the intro site course alone. So I'm, I'm really excited about what we can do with it. Go to the next slide for me. Of course. Oh. Oh, there we are. Thank you. Oh. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. So for a while, I didn't realize how much my intro psych textbook cost um, because publishers send us for free. So we just, we look through them and we pick the one that makes the most sense or comes with the best supplemental materials. And I had, I really had no idea. Um, and students started to complain about it and they didn't buy the books and I really was concerned. So honestly, the most recent interest I was using costs $70 if you just get the ebook or $150 if you actually want the real book. And it didn't have anything um, like what Waymaker has. So a lot of students know that mine didn't buy the book. And I'm not surprised that they didn't. To be honest, even by then, I would try to get um, like a free PDF online, um, but it wasn't, it wasn't anywhere the same as, as what we've got now. So that, that was a real issue. Um, the second one on here, time needed to provide feedback. I, I really like to encourage my students uh, in every area it is that they're struggling. And so with the previous situation, I was creating quizzes, I was looking at everything, I was trying to give them what they needed and it took, it, it took a lot more time than what we've got going on with Waymaker. And I really tended to focus more of my time on students who weren't doing well. Um, and that, you know, they pulled in a couple of quizzes, I would email them, ask them to come and see me. 
but I, I neglected the students who were doing well. I, I did. I, I just didn't have time. Um, but now, Waymaker does it for me. So it's, it's really awesome. Um, but, but we'll get to that. The other issue I had was that intro psych is, is a huge course. So, I mean, you basically can take 16 full semester courses and crush them into 16 weeks. And it was hard. It was hard to figure out what they knew and what they didn't know and where I needed to focus my classroom time because I use Waymaker for both hybrid courses and for fully face-to-face -face courses. Um, I, I would use it obviously if I were teaching online, but it has huge practical application um, even when you see students face-to-face. -face. So I, I really didn't, you know, the problem was I really didn't know what they didn't know um, specifically without asking them and I still didn't really know. Um, so with Waymaker, now I'm able to clearly provide instruction on the areas that they're struggling with, um, which has been awesome for me. Could you go to the next slide? Thank you. So what do we like? I think we covered pretty much um, my first bullet point there. <laughs> it is it is a huge improvement over the OpenStax. There were tons of typos in that document, um, which you know you get what you pay for sometimes, but but not with Waymaker. You get way more than what you pay for. Um, in addition to just using the OpenStax text, I also tried a different OER-based learning system. And it was very difficult to work with. It was very, very difficult to work with. There were lots and lots and lots of errors in the quizzes. There were wrong answers. There were typos. Uh, the grade book was, it was a nightmare to manage. Um, and there was nothing I could do about it. So at the end of the semester, that particular company asked me why I was leaving and what they could do. And, and you know, there were just too many errors, but that has not been an issue with Waymaker. If there's anything, anything that's wrong, a comma out of place, probably, um, I just send an email and it's taken care of within a, within a day, uh, always, but sometimes faster than that. Um, and, and to me, that's just, that, that's amazing. And my students like that too, because I empower them to send me a screenshot if they find an error, because it's hard for me to, you know, with a fine tooth comb, read everything that's in there. But if they see it and they send it to me, I can tell them, oh, thank you guys. And now it's been fixed. So they, they really like that. It makes them feel good. They feel like editors. Um, so yeah, beyond that, uh, I, I really love, the PowerPoints are great the assignments and quizzes, I can't, I couldn't be more happy um, with, with Waymaker. And it is super easy to use. Like Chris said, it just, it just fits right in. We use D2L and it seamlessly just goes into every, the grade book is, is um, integrated. It's, it's awesome. And my quizzes are really easy to use even for new students. So at the beginning of the semester, I'll just pull it up and walk them through an example and there haven't been any questions. No student has come to me to say, I don't know how to do this. No, they, they don't require an introductory video walking them through it. It just, it works. It's just, it's intuitive for them. Um, on my end, it's really easy to move, remove, change information. I know Chris mentioned that, but it, it is absolutely true. Um, at the beginning of the semester, it probably took me less time, it absolutely took me less time than it normally takes to set up a course. So the only thing I had to do beyond opening the screen was make sure that the assignments I wanted were where they needed to be and set up my grade book and due dates, which I would have had to do even if I just copied my own course to a new course shell. So it's not, difficult to use at at all not at all um oh my most favorite favorite thing is that when the students are, are taking the formative quizzes um, i can or or even 
the other quizzes. I can look at that chapter and figure out what they know, what they don't know, which to me is just amazing. So if 30% of students understood this module and 85% understood this module, when I have them in class, I'm going to focus on the module that only 30% understood. I mean, it's, it's, like, it's like having a genius teaching assistant. Uh, for, <laughs> it, it is awesome. It's really awesome. And, and, and as much as that is amazing, the best part really is the back to the students. Um, they, they love it. They love it. Even after they figure out that it's not me, they still love it. Um, and the way they figure it out is they're, they're so smart. They said, Dr. Trevor, are you really up at two o'clock in the morning when I'm doing my quiz? No, baby. No, baby. I'm sleeping. But I asked them, like, does it still, like, do you still feel encouraged by that? And, and they say, yes, they do. Um, and then sometimes they will respond to the email because it comes directly from my email to their email so they can reply back to me. And they can ask me questions or they can say, like Chris showed earlier, you know, thank you for the encouragement. I really appreciate that. Um, so it's nice. Um, and so the way I explain it to them is that, you know, yes, yes, I, I did set this up, right? It really is me sending the email. I just sent it way in advance and you're just now getting it. So they, they're okay with that. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that's about it. Can I, can I share my screen? Yeah, Jessica, you can just go down to the bottom and hover over the bottom of your bar and hit share and it'll pop over to yours. All right, just wanted to make sure we had, um, yeah, we have some time. So I just want to kind of walk you guys through. My internet connection is unstable because I live in the woods. So we will try, um, we will try to do this. So just to show you what I was talking about with the quizzes. So let's see, we are currently in this section. And you can just kind of see the way I set up my course. I don't know if this is useful to anyone, but I just leave all the course contents in draft. There's obviously the succeeding with Waymaker that tells students how to be successful with this program. I have my own little special project I like to do. I upload all the crash course videos to all of my courses just because they're in their own little box. But, um, probably don't need to do that anymore. And then I just, you know, I just take and set up each chapter. So it comes, the whole package comes with the study plan, the quiz, and then I take the um, PowerPoints and throw them in there for my students. Um, I know some faculty don't like that. So obviously that's, that's up to the individual person. And then OpenStax has a seri series of videos that go along with the text. So I just kind of throw those in there for them. But if we'll look in at the study plan, Yeah, so living in the woods is a blessing and a curse. Okay, so you can see here that on the formative assessment, 50% of them understood, and the summative, they had 77%. So obviously, a lot of my students still need help with all three of those areas, which is fine. When I go into it, it shows me the number of attempts, which is wonderful because I want to know that my students are actually doing the quizzes. Oh, slow internet, sorry. Okay, so I, I really like that, that I can just scroll over and see who's doing what and what they need help with. So 
So let's see. So with, with um, this particular chapter here, uh, the Windmaker Pack comes with a lot of assignments, um, and they're they're all really good, but they're only small. So I took their KSA assignment and turned it into a this class. So this is the class that I just just met, and online with the KSA based on their their job. And then when I met with them in class last night, I divided them up by major and we practiced creating interview questions and interviewing each other based on the KSAs or the particular jobs that they created. Um, so the, the Waymaker assignments really are, they really are fantastic. And I don't know that I would have come up with something like this on my own. Um, so I appreciate the expertise that's, that's being shared. Uh, there's anything else I need to show you guys in the course. Um, do any of the, the other panelists have any questions or is there anything you want me to show? I'm not seeing any comments right now from everybody. All right, sounds good. Well, that, that is it for me unless unless there's anything else you guys want um, want me to show. Now that's really excellent. It's really fun to have you dive in there, Jessica, and show, um, even being at Lumen, I forget about the little hover over uh, tool that immediately shows you how your students do because I'm not checking in obviously with my students all the time, but it's really exciting to see the instructors show the pieces that make their job easier or more insightful so that they can really serve the needs of their students. So really appreciate you jumping in on those pieces. Um, let me see if I've got, go ahead, I'll, we'll open it up for questions here if anybody has any. Um, and then we just appreciate you coming and showing up on a Friday afternoon to join us to learn a little bit more about the psychology, uh, both from the Lumen perspective and what's coming forward and, and especially grateful to Jessica for sharing her experience and the students' experience. Um, every time we join one of these, we learn more about the students. We like those user data that, this, that it is intuitive for students. Uh, we also really like to hear what's not going well so that we can uh, continue to make improvements, as Jessica says, as you forward your suggestions on to us, we try and address those quickly. So we'll hang around for just a few minutes and see if there's any questions. Um, really appreciate everybody's time today, and thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Jessica, thank you. I appreciated your insights as well. It was great to hear your perspective on that. So I, I want to say thank you to you again, Wendy, because I always ask my students, like, because they knew I was going to do this, like, okay, what do you guys love? What, what's not so great? And they said that they don't like that they don't know why they got something wrong. And I was like, okay, fair, fair enough. And so, I've, you know, I, I wasn't going to mention that, but I am so glad that you addressed it. Yes, good. Oh, I'm glad you said that also because um, so we are getting the feedback for all the targeted questions, but something we're actively, I'm sorry, for all of the practice questions on the try it, like embedded in the text, yeah. something we're actively working towards is showing that same feedback on their self checks on the other quizzes that they take. So um, we don't have a projected date for that yet, but we have, um, we're working hard to, to author all of that feedback so that as soon as we have the technology ready for it, that that'll be there too. So it's definitely on our radar um, because that feedback, it, I mean, it is as a student myself, I mean, really, it's so nice to get that kind of feedback and know like, why did I miss this? Well, yeah. <laughs> So I'm going so to tell them. I'm going to tell them that that I told you that was their concern. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 